Good evening, Vancouver. Welcome back to Canucks After Dark. Monday, April 15th. We are just five days away from the playoffs, although maybe eight days away from Canucks playoff hockey. Uh, but as always, joined by my co-host, Canuck Clay. How are you doing today, Clay? I am doing great, Parker. I'm doing great because we are watch, still scoreboard watching because we're not sure where the Canucks are going to end up. And that is way better than every other year when we are trying to figure out how every game affects our lottery odds. So this is brand new territory for me and you. And I think we both love it if I can speak for both of us. Yeah, usually by now we are well resigned to figuring out how we are going to kill two and a half months before the draft and free agency. Yes. Um, now, yes. hopefully the Canucks give us two months of that time to not do that. Um, you know, very optimistic, of course, but um, look, the Canucks are down to two games left in their schedule, playing Tuesday uh, against Calgary, Thursday against Winnipeg. Um, and, and in a perfect world, that Thursday game might not even matter. Um, yeah. So this could be, you know, this this team is just in gear up for the playoffs mode. Um, they It looks like they're going to get a long rest, which we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, playoff chases are going crazy around the league. We'll, we'll talk about the, the race on the East because that's the most intriguing generally. But of course, we'll talk about uh, what everything means to the Canucks, right? Um, you know, the the Vegas push, um, the, you know, Nashville has locked in essentially wild card one. Um, yeah. So if the Canucks finish first in the Pacific, which is second in the conference, they'll face Nashville, but they still could catch Dallas. They, you know, there's still a bunch of things that could change. So uh, we're going to run through yeah. all that here tonight. Exactly. And yes, Canucks fans, everyone watching, thank you, first and foremost. And yes, there's still a remote, but still a chance that we have to play Vegas in the first round, but we will we'll talk through all those scenarios. Parker, it's crazy because we did Wednesday for last week. We only have one game to talk about a nice win for the Canucks. And then we can spend the majority of the show talking about the East, talking about the West, talking about the Pacific, talking about the conference, the West conference. This is going to be a fun show tonight because yeah, the playoffs are one week away. And as you kind of hinted, maybe even longer than a week away, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is a tough one for me. There was one game, and I, I didn't watch most of it, unfortunately. I got you, I got you. don't worry, I got you. Um, I think I had a game at 7.45 that night, which is, of course, the worst possible time, because it ends uh, basically right with, actually, maybe it was 8.45, and, it, and I watched the first period, and that's all I could see. So, um, But a, a big win in a game that I didn't have much confidence that they would win, to be completely honest with you, but obviously Connor McDavid missing. Um, but balanced out somewhat by Thatcher Demko missing, but an all-worlder from Casey to Smith. Um, so that's our plan. Uh, people are piling in. Thank yeah, you all for joining us so far. It's great. People are excited, Matt. Not maybe a little bit for you and me, more you than me, but more importantly for where the Canucks are right now and all of the uncertainty, as certain as we are that they're making the playoffs. But it's still, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. It actually, it's in, we're in a really neat space right now. I think. Yeah, it was a nice title for me to be able to uh, to go with um, saying the Canucks will win the Pacific Division. Look, technically, hockey images that precede unfortunate events, Twitter, please don't yeah. screenshot this. Um, a lot would have to go wrong for the Canucks to not win the Pacific. Correct. Um, that would mean getting no points in the last two games while Edmonton wins out, um, which is frankly really unlikely. Um, just as unlikely as the Canucks winning the Western Conference, which is technically still a possibility yeah. as well. Yeah, basically everyone can change atop the conference and the divisions if certain teams win out. But Edmonton only had to win three, and they did the first one tonight. So, but yeah, that means we got to muck up the next two games, not even get a single point. Which I know we we keep we'll get into this properly, so people can you know get out their spreadsheet or their pad of paper, or their abacus, or whatever they want to do, and follow along. <laughs> yeah, we we know very likely what's going to happen, right? Just statistically. Like, yes, there's the edge cases. Um, so right now, and I'm going to pull up uh, pull up the old um, the old standings just to make sure I have everything right up to date okay. uh, as it stands today. So the Vancouver Canucks sit first in the Pacific with 107 points. Let's start just from the Pacific. 80 games played. The only team that can catch them is Edmonton with 80 games played. Edmonton is three points behind. So it is that simple. The Canucks hold the tiebreaker. Edmonton would need to win both of their games mm -hmm. while the Canucks would have to get no points in the last two games. Now, the odds of that happening, pretty low, frankly, yep. right? Yep. Um, possible, but coming into today, 
Uh, the Athletic had the Canucks at a 96% chance of winning the Pacific. Of course, the Edmonton Oilers do get a win, uh, a pretty handily um, <laughs> fought win, 9-2 over San Jose tonight. Um, so that helps their odds a little bit. But again, they do have to, you know, the, the Canucks win against the Oilers was was huge for that. Yes. Yep, no, you're right. And then we'll, uh, I'll put this away because let's talk about the game first. But um, mm -hmm. And then others making a point. Yeah, actually, technically, the one thing we do know is LA cannot beat Nashville. They cannot catch Nashville. So if LA wins their game, they get to 99. They uh, they have the same regulation wins, but then uh, Nashville has the has the tie break on, on LA. But well, LA is only uh, in six technically by virtue of being a specific team. But we'll get into all that in about 10 or 15 minutes after we break down the I guess the game first. That's what we usually should do. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's go back to Saturday night. Uh, Canucks traveling to Edmonton to take on the Oilers, like I said, without Connor McDavid. Um, Canucks obviously without Thatcher Demko, who <laughs> will start tomorrow night, um, but we'll get to that. Um, so they go back to Casey DeSmith. She loves gets a few starts, does quite well. I mean, he gets some wins. Uh, Casey DeSmith gets a little bit of seemingly needed rest. Uh, you know, he's been good in the backup role all season. Um, you know, you go, you put them out in this, um, like, Hey, you're playing every night, every other night, you know, the, the sort of grind didn't seem like he was really ready for it. Um, but gets some rest goes out. And I just want to start with that. I mean, we'll go you know, obviously step by step, but, but 32 of 33, um, against a team with as much firepower as the Oilers. Like that's a, that's a great bounce back game for Casey to Smith and should really shut up any rumors about, <laughs> Oh, should she loves be the backup in the playoffs? No, no, he shouldn't be. It's a good story. He's been playing well, but Casey to Smith is far and away the guy, if anything were to happen to Demko. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree with you completely. And the interesting thing, Parker, I was thinking about this and I made this point on my show. If, if they knew, and I know you and I were speculating about this last Wednesday, if they knew for sure that Demko was going to start the Calgary game and nothing sooner than that, then it actually makes sense that she lost played on Wednesday against Arizona, a team he beat the week before and that they saved to Smith for Edmonton on Saturday. So it actually, when you step back now and look back at the past week, the way that they went, she loves, she loves to Smith actually makes sense when, if they knew that Demko was only going to come back tomorrow. And it sounds like that was the plan. That's what Demko yeah. was saying. The plan all along was for him to come back in the Calgary game, which, um, you know, a long timeline out to, to target a game like that, but that's what they did seemingly. Um, so let's break this game down. It's a, it's a depth game for the most part for the Canucks. And it starts off, um, I mean, scoring wise late in the first period, Edmonton had the jump early in this game, I think is pretty fair to say. Um, but the Canucks sort of battled back in the, in the latter half of the second period. Um, and it ends up being Sam Lafferty just coming in on a rush, gets a pl uh, puck from Zadorov and just beats Stuart Skinner. Yeah, it was a good play. Um, I, I watched a couple of times. Zadorov made a nice pass to Lafferty. Lafferty came in with speed, which is one of his attributes. Brock, he came on for Brock Bester. So a good, well-timed line change. And yeah, you're a D man. So I love your thought on this. Darnell Nurse, uh, didn't close the gap. I don't know if he was respecting Lafferty's speed, if he was respecting JT Miller driving the lane or Suter on the floor, whatever it was, it was it was a quasi three on two. So I get that Nurse maybe couldn't commit right away, but he get left enough time for Lafferty to rip that shot past the far side. Skinner's kind of cheating out too much too. So there's maybe both Skinner and Nurse didn't play that perfectly, but uh, credit to Lafferty for a, a really good shot. Yeah, for a guy who hasn't been scoring much, and it's it's not well played by Darnell Nurse. Uh, gap yeah. control is is so important, especially you got to know who's out there, right? Like you you've got a guy like Sam Lafferty coming in on you, right? You should be playing that pretty aggressive because in theory you are a better defender than he is a scorer, right? Yes. Um, yes. So even if he gets a little half step on you, you should be able to still keep him to the outside, try to break up a pass. Uh, but yeah, he just lets him walk in and, and get a quality scoring chance off and. Uh, you know, Stuart Skinner's not, you know, he's not a top goalie in the league. He's a fine goalie. Um, and uh, yeah, you got to, you just got to play that a little bit tighter, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Scott, Scott saying terrible angle. Yes, he was, uh, yeah, uh, Parker just said, didn't play it tight, cheated a little bit. And um, yeah, in a, in a period where you say Edmonton probably had the advantage, it was nice for us to go into the break with the lead for sure. Absolutely. Um, so we go to the second period um, and then about halfway through the second, um, I think this was a, you know, a better period from the Canucks, uh, much more even. Um, mm. It's Pew Suter, again, sticking with that depth theme. And I don't know when the last time Sam Lafferty had scored. I know Pew Suter has not been hitting the score sheet a lot lately. Um, he gets his 14th. 
Um, this is a really nice play by Tyler Myers. I remember watching this. I was watching this before my game. It was an 845 start. So I'm in the dressing room with the phone and I immediately see the zone entry and I'm thinking this is offside. This doesn't count. <laughs> um, but what happened is you have one guy getting off the ice onto the bench and the virtual ad on the boards sort of clips out his legs. So it looks like he's still standing on the ice, but then his legs disappear and it's really confusing, but I guess he did get his feet into the boards. Um, so it wasn't offside. Myers just goes in, um, throws it to the middle. Suter gets a really nice tip on it. Um, and the Canucks have a two nothing lead. Oh, you know, I didn't even think about that. I was so uh, marveling in awe. Of I, I literally I didn't celebrate player. for a second when I saw that go in. I was like, this wow. is not going to count. Um, wow. Okay. Because it really okay. like I don't know if you you have the replay in front of you, but on the zone entry, the the yeah. so ad like he's stepping into the the bench and there's a gate there, but the gate doesn't exist because the virtual boards have overwrote the gate. So it looks like to me that he's trying to vault the boards but he's obviously not doing that. So it's a weird visual trick from the fake ads uh, that make it look like he's just standing on the ice when he's actually stay up, uh, you know, on the, uh, on the oh, ledge going right. to the bench. I think it's Garland. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, that is strange. I didn't even notice. I was, yes. Like I said, I was too busy marveling at the beautiful pass to the middle that, uh, yeah, a really nice touch by Myers and even a better touch by, by Suter for sure. That's, that's really funny, Parker. Great observation, man. Yeah, I that's just me being scared of goals coming back. <laughs> it's the, that's the one thing that I don't like about the reviews is you, sometimes you can't celebrate too hard till uh, till the face off. <laughs> right, um, right, right. So Suter gets his 14th. Nice play from Tyler Myers. He's up to 23 assists on the season. Um, yep. Edmonton does get one back though. Uh, it is a Vander Kane. Um, this one I, I wasn't watching at this point. Look, this is just a point shot that he's standing in front and he redirects. Yeah, it's actually, um, so Her Heronic got uh, beat off, uh, yeah, out muscled on the puck. People were saying he was a little bit too slow to get to the front. So as Nurse takes the shot, actually Nurse gets a secondary assist because Connor Brown and Kane were both crossing in front of DeSmith. So apparently Brown tipped it enough where it changes deflect uh, very quickly. So they're both swiping down, basically, and it goes off of Brown, off of Kane. They both celebrate the exact same way, like they both thought they scored, and it was Kane's goal. And it was it looked close to high stick, but it wasn't. So no challenge, no nothing. Uh, so double deflection to get past to Smith. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, that's if that's the only way that he gets beat on the night, there's not much, uh, not much you can complain about. Um, so we go to the third, and the Canucks go into turtle mode. Uh, yes. They're patented, you know, whatever it was, the first 30 times they led after two, they they didn't lose. It's been a little shakier since then, right? It was more of a, I think they're like 45 and five or something closer to those numbers um, <laughs> where it's fallen apart a little bit. But this is something that this team is going to be doing in the playoffs, right? If the Canucks have a one goal lead going to the third in the playoffs, they are going to be shutting it down uh, and they're really good at it. They, and they've proven it time and time again, all season, they have just five shots. They allow just eight in the third. Um, and the Canucks just sort of suffocate the Oilers. And then a really untimely goalie pull, um, from the Oilers right as, uh, they enter the Canuck zone. The puck gets turned over uh, with the goalie sort of caught all the all the way to the bench with the guy already on the ice. Puck just goes over to Joshua. He's got a wide open empty net as he walks into the zone. Yeah, it's nice to see that our newly minted third line uh, being un very unselfish. Uh, Garland could have shot it, but he passed it to Lindholm. Lindholm, Lindholm could have definitely shot it, but he passed it to Joshua, who had a better angle. And uh, I, yes, Joshua, make no mistake, put it in. And I love what you said about protecting leads. And I, I, I'm i not sure if you're going to get to this uh, or we can just get to it now because he is tallied in the scoring. Lindholm had an awesome game. Like he might not be ripping the puck in the net or might not be piling up the points. And it's not me, Parker, trying to justify the trade. We know how much we gave up to get him. We know what Kuzmenko's doing in garbage time in Calgary. So I don't discredit any of that. But Lindholm really shut down. Uh, I know there's no McDavid, but he shut down Dreisaitl. And if this is the Lindholm we get for the playoffs, wins face-offs, kills penalties, and breaks up plays and getting other guys frustrated, uh, I'm all for it, man. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, that's a heck of a playoff player like it's not it's not the 40 goal scorer that we were kind of hoping you know I'll put him with skilled players and he's going to excel again we haven't seen that um, obviously there's been injury woes and uh, you know he's been a little hit or miss and but to come out is you know, sort of as a bounce back and, and as the third line center 
I mean, you look at this team down the middle right now, right? You go, mm -hmm. you know, Miller, Patterson, and then you now have Lindholm between Joshua and Garland on that third line. That is a heck of a grinding third line that can that has some scoring upside, but is suffocating to deal with. And I think yep. that's going to be, look, they paid a lot um, for a 3C, essentially is what they're getting, but they're getting a, a pretty elite third line center with that scoring upside. Um, that, you know, that's one of those players that, you put him in the playoffs, he could very well be a big difference maker. Yeah. And isn't it funny, uh, Parker, how we've talked many times about the duos, and it's usually a center and a winger, but we made the point last week that Joshua and Garland, the two wingers, are actually the duo. They've now played with three of the four centers. They started the season with Bluger. They had that stint with Miller, and now they're with Lindholm. So the only center they haven't played with is Petey, actually. It's kind of it's kind of cool how much, as you said, uh, that Rick Tockett loves them as a pair. <laughs> Yeah, and they're they've been so so good, right? Like that's obviously the big key is is they're just defined by their success. Um, so a, a pretty solid win. I mean, you, if you look at things like natural stat trick, you'll be like, oh, the Canucks, you know, got outplayed, um, and it was really just the first period, right? Yeah. In all situations, in the first period, expected goals were about two to zero point six, but of course, we know that the Canucks scored the only goal in the first. Uh, second period was basically 55-45 in favor of the Oilers, and the third period was 55-45 in favor of the Canucks. So mm -hmm. essentially, and I think that empty netter might influence that a little bit, but either way, that's you know one period that the Canucks survived, thanks essentially to Casey to Smith, and the yep. Canucks put their foot on the gas, um, took, the, took the two goal lead, or yeah, I guess at one point, one goal lead into the third, and just close the lanes. Did you? I don't know about you, Parker. I, I I think I've said before. I make a point of watching the post game media availability from the opponent only when we win because I, I don't like watching it when we lose. I don't do anything when we lose, basically. But uh, the the Oilers are like the coach is fine. Knobloch gave gave the Canucks credit. I mean, everyone says that's a good team over there. They don't even reference our names. That's a good team over there. But the players, Parker, to a man, they downplayed the loss. As if, uh, not to say we're going to get them in the playoffs. They didn't mention Vancouver. They talked just in general about they're going to make the playoffs. They're fine. They're the best team in the league. Da da da. DeHarnay said that, I think. So it's kind of funny how I think it'd be the opposite. If they had won, they would be talking about, oh, now we're one point behind for the Pacific Division lead. But because they lost, right. they were kind of re resigned to the fact that it's going to still possible, but improbable. Yeah. And look, the Oilers are still going to have home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs, whether that's yep. against LA or that's against Vegas, that is yet to be seen. But what this game did for the Canucks is lock up home ice in the second round, essentially, mm -hmm. um, which is big, right? That's that gives that, you know, I think the odds are something like 54 to 55 percent of the time the home team wins just generally in the NHL. It's about a five percent oh. swing. Um, so that's, you know, it's a nice little edge to have, uh, especially when you're going to be maybe against an Edmonton or an L.A. or a Vegas in that uh, in that second round. Um, it's going to be a really nice boon to have the extra game uh, at home. Yes. Uh, no, all those things for sure. That's why, yeah, I, I, I do think that winning the division is is important for the Canucks for sure. Yeah, you just, you, you, why not? You want every advantage you can get. That's why I don't worry about the President's Trophy curse, not like that the Rangers worry about that, but the, the practical part of winning the President's Trophy is every round that you're in, you're guaranteed a whole nice advantage, and why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely helps. Yeah. So, yeah, that's two games to go. Yeah. Um, which we can, I mean, we, we, we touched on those really quick because they, they really don't carry a ton of weight looking at the standings. Um, yeah. Right. The Canucks, it's either they get no points and they hope Edmonton loses at some point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they get a single point across the two games and then they're fine. It doesn't matter. Right. So, Right. Perfect world. Canucks go in, take down the flames tomorrow, and then they can really just rest some guys. They'll have yeah. a week. They'll have a yeah. Or they would have a full week then until the rumor is Tuesday that the Canucks would start their playoffs. Um, that would be a, a yeah, a full week of rest. Um, yeah. There's there's a bunch of things that we can talk about there. The, yeah. Of course, Demko and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, awesome. So a uh, perfect way to transition. want to thank Coach Rob for gifting five memberships. Carol for gifting 10 memberships. So that's awesome. P 
Peter acknowledging that he's been around here for nine months as a member, which is great. And Fangirl, 21 months, which is probably as long as we've had membership. So thanks to Coach Rob, to Carol, Peter, and Fangirl. Thank you for your generosity. By the way, this is the first time that Parker and I are streaming on X as well, former Twitter. Uh, that's helped the numbers a little bit, but still, it's awesome. There's over 100 people on the YouTube side, over 200 people on the X side, which makes us beg the question, why haven't we been doing this earlier? <laughs> yeah, silly, silly, silly mistake on our end, to be completely honest with you. That's uh, error on, on our part, unforced error. Um, so those of you on on the X side, uh, and I know the majority, or Twitter, I'm, I'm calling it Twitter, I'm not calling it X. You do whatever uh, you want, man. The majority of you on the Twitter side, I know you're on Clay's, uh, but you feel free to come by the YouTube as well. So hit the yep. subscribe button, hit like. If you are here on Twitter, make sure you're following us there as well. Um, this is good for the playoffs. and. Yeah, there, there's. I, I really don't know where to go next because we can. We have standings to talk about. We have what do you do with that Tradenco to talk about? Um, we have obviously the scheduling to talk about for game yeah. one. Uh, there's so many different ways for us to go that I'm just gonna lean back and let you pick one. Okay, how about this? Let's say Canuck centric. Let's talk about the next two games, and I have a question for you about Demco, okay. which will lead us into Canuck scenarios. Canucks opponents, and then we'll bounce to the East end off. How's that sound? Sounds good. Awesome. If the Canucks win tomorrow night, Parker, and they sew up first place in the Pacific, do you play Demko on Thursday, send him out to Winnipeg for the one game, even though he might not be backstopping a full team, even though Winnipeg might not have a full team, but you get him the reps, or can you mimic that in practice, which you said might be all the way until Tuesday the 23rd? What says you? There's a lot of factors at play. If yeah. the Canucks go out, Thatcher Demko stops, you know, 27 of 28, has yeah. a fantastic performance, just looks ready to go. I'm thinking don't even send him to Winnipeg, frankly. Mm -hmm. If the Canucks lose or maybe it's like a 4-3 win where he lets in like at yeah, 24-27, maybe it's not a great performance that he's, you know, <laughs> is still getting back into it. Then I think you play him. I, I think you give him two chances essentially to gather momentum going into the playoffs. Okay. Um, it was interesting. So I was listening to Kevin Woodley this morning on Halford and Bruff, and he mm. was mentioning, uh, essentially there's, you know, practice reps just can't replicate game speed, which is one thing to focus on. And that's why he was saying, I think they'll just play him in both games, especially right. with five days of rest after that Thursday game. The other side of that, he said though, is that, um, if you do, let's say win against Calgary tomorrow, let's say they rest five guys for that Thursday game. Let's say Besser doesn't play, which I think would be a given given that he's had, you know, a couple of maintenance days lately. Maybe Good they point. sit Patterson and, and Lynn Holman Miller, like some of the big guns. Um, he was then saying like, if you have guys in front of you who you aren't, who aren't doing what you're expecting them to do, cause it's, you know, lower caliber that might also throw off your rhythm a little bit. So there's a lot of things at play and it's, it's a way tougher decision for me. I don't know if I love him only playing one game going into the playoffs uh, after not playing for over a month. Um, but I also don't want to risk him getting hurt when he could have a whole extra week of rest essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So fascinating. And you're right. If somehow they lose against Calgary tomorrow, which I hope not, it's their home finale, but then it's a moot point. You play them, you still try and win the division. Right. And, and then the bonus is, well, not even a bonus intuitively he gets more reps, but yeah. So maybe they worry about this after they see what happens tomorrow night, but uh, it's, that's going to be fascinating to watch. But more importantly, the bigger story here is Demko's coming back and that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's a huge boon for the team. You really yeah. like that. That injury could not have cut it closer, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's just good for the league, right? You don't want you don't want Casey to Smith in, in game yeah. one. Nothing, you know, not, based on last night, not necessarily a terrible thing, but yeah. Demko's the guy. He needs to be there. Um, so it. it'll be it'll be great to have him back. All right. Second Canucks question for you, Mr. Parker. Uh, when you heard Tuesday, what did you think? So I'll start this one off. Selfishly, I loved it because I think you and I were talking about uh, we, we didn't want to show on Monday. I was sorry. We didn't want to actually maybe did want a game on Monday. No, we didn't. As much as we want to talk Canucks, we weren't sure if we we're going to go to the game. If we we're going to have people over or whatever. So uh, whatever happens. I know for me personally, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday were my worst options because I couldn't go Saturday. I couldn't go Wednesday. But Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday are my best options because I can make all three of those dates. Did you 
smile when you saw Tuesday or did you not care? No, that that's big for me. Um, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, obviously if we focus on this show, yeah. um, yeah, normally we do this Monday at 10 PM, like where you are right now. Yeah. Um, if the Canucks played on Monday at 7 PM, let's say, um, yeah, I, I'm going to have a bunch of people over and then we'd have to move the show like to Sunday so we can preview the series. What this allows us to do from the show perspective, the games on the Tuesday, the, the 23rd, yeah. Monday, the 22nd show is just all talk about yeah. this series and we'll know who the opponent is. We'll know, break, you know, we break can everything break down, down every yeah. single line, every single matchup, which is going to be a ton of fun. Um, the other part of it for me is that I have a work trip the following week from I'm gone from Monday to Thursday. Okay. Now game five is the game I have tickets for, which I was doing the math on and was going to either fall on the Wednesday, which right. I had no chance of going to, or the Thursday, in which case I would need to move my flight to an earlier flight and give air Canada more of my money. <laughs> um, however, if they play Tuesday or they start Tuesday and they do two day gaps for travel, yeah. which I don't know if that'll happen with the series starting so late. That's an iffy one. It looks like the Canucks won't play game five till Friday, the third, which means I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of things at play. Tuesday is best case scenario for me, though. Actually, you know, it's so funny when I asked you that. I actually forgot. You did tell me about that last week about uh, when we went off air. So what happened? So, Parker, let's say they say, um, don't worry about the travel. You guys got to make up the time. It's the same for both teams. If they go every second night, then that puts game five on the Wednesday, right? Wednesday yeah. And then, so that's bad for you. That's bad. Then I you. can't make it. Okay. If it's the Thursday, I can make it. It's just expensive because I have to change right. my flight from the okay. 5 p.m. flight to the 7 a.m. flight. Right. Um, which I will do <laughs> if I have to, um, but it's not the Sweet. ideal option. And so even if it's not even a two, uh, two two-day gaps, even if it's just one, either going there or coming back, then that gets you at least to the Thursday, the second. So that's yeah. what we're hoping for. Friday, the third's ideal. I hear, and it's, you know, what's crazy is I thought, well, I know I, I'm going to be in Denver for my graduation for my master's from Thursday, the second to fr uh, sat Sunday, the fifth. So imagine if the Colorado Avalanche are hosting the Winnipeg Jets, I'm going to be so tempted to go. <laughs> That'll be a hot ticket. That'll I know, be, I know. But it would be a heck of a game. Okay, well, we'll worry about that, but I, I agree with you. If the C series does start on the 23rd, then you think tonight's show is big. The next Monday show is going to be massive because you're right. We're, we're breaking down every single thing about the playoff series, every combo, D pairing, every goaltender, every stat, head-to-head. -head. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's something that we have not done, as we've we've lamented about in our three years of existence together. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting that this could have been – this show could have been, well, the Canucks have two games left. It's nice that Demko's back. Hopefully he'll be, you know, fully healthy for the preseason. Um, man, we got all these expiring contracts. What are they going to do with Ian Cole? What are they going to, yeah. you know, what are they going to do with Phil Peronic? Yeah. Um, oh, thank goodness Petey resigned. Like, it, the fact that we could have been having this conversation today. Oh, yeah. But now we're talking about, hey, 95, maybe 90% chance after the Oilers won today, 90% chance the Canucks win the Pacific Division, have home ice in the first two rounds, most likely play, honestly, the best case scenario in the Nashville Predators, not, not underestimating them, but yep. I'd rather play Edmund, or Nashville and then Edmonton instead of Vegas than Edmonton, um, right. just because I think your odds are better and every yeah. percentage point counts. So, um, yeah, with you know, the next couple of weeks are going to be intense. It's I, I'm excited. I'm just going to be live, living, breathing, sleeping Canucks hockey uh, and sweating out every moment of every game. And it's not <laughs> it's not something we, I've done since 2020. Right. And even that felt a, it didn't have that same feeling. But right. I think back to, you know, the Tanev overtime goal against Minnesota um, yep. and where I was for that. And like that was like I had a hockey game that night and we, my buddy recorded it at his house. So we get off the ice, we get unchanged so fast. So no one can spoil it. We race to his place and watch the entire game until like <laughs> 1am probably. Um, and it was, yeah, like moments like that are the things you remember. Um, and that's going to be really cool. I'm, I'm happy we're back there. Me too. And I know in three weeks, you will never hear me use the word master again, but obviously it's a big, uh, a big milestone in my life. And what's crazy, Parker, is um, I'll, I'll just get your pity for 10 seconds here. I have my 
my paper, my capstone presentation, my, no, sorry, my paper, my capstone assignment, my capstone presentation, and my final all to be done before I get on my plane on Thursday, May the 2nd. So I'm going to try and do as much as I can before Tuesday night, the 23rd, right? For all intents and purposes, these two games aren't as important. Obviously, it's no. game one. So I'm going to try hard to work my butt off this weekend. So yeah, exactly. I want to le- live, breathe, and uh, die Canucks over the, you know, over the first round. But I, I think I might have to do some studying in there too, which is kind of sucks. But not looking for pity, just uh, stating where I'm at too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. So let's go to the standings uh, and let's talk about where the Canucks currently sit. Um, cool. If I pull it up again, is that good? Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. So let's start. Uh, yeah, we'll start Pacific focused, like I sort of mentioned here, and I'm gonna see if I can make this bigger on my end too, so I can see it. Sure. Um, so on your screen, you can see the uh, the standings. So let's look at the Pacific Canucks, yeah. obviously 107 points, two games to play. The Oilers are three points back. Um, like we said earlier, the Oilers would need to win both of their games to then have one more point than the Canucks and the Canucks would need to get no points because they hold the tiebreaker over the Oilers, which is that regulation wins column. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, it, you know, if the Canucks get a single point tomorrow or in the following game, it's over. The Canucks win the Pacific division. Um, that's really it. That's the only thing that can happen on this side. There is still the question of who gets third in the Pacific, which could be Vegas, could be LA for the Mm. Canucks. That doesn't matter right now. That is an Edmonton problem. Right, right. The only case in which that does matter is if the Canucks win their final two games and the Dallas Stars lose their final game in regulation because the Canucks would then tie them with 111 points and have the tiebreaker So technically, the Canucks could still win the Western Conference. Yes. If that were to happen, then instead of playing wildcard one, which the Canucks currently would as the number two seed in the conference, they would play wildcard two, which would be either Vegas or L.A., um, which is a little scarier to me. um, But being the one seed also has its perks as well. That's home ice through the first three rounds. Um, and really potentially into the cup final, depending on who they're playing, right? Who makes it from the East. So um, there's something to play for there, but it's not as likely as them just finishing first in the division. So everyone in the chat, just process what Parker just said for a second. Uh, We we understand the Vancouver versus Edmonton. All we need is a point or they lose a point and we get get first in Pacific. But if we win both our games and Dallas does not get a single point, we have the tiebreaker. So picture this, as Parker said, Nashville is locked in to wild card one because they're just waiting to see what the two Pacific division teams do, but they're locked in. So yes, for those of you who are fearing Vegas and I, I don't believe in jinxes, I'll just say it for those of you who are fearing Vegas, all Vegas has to do is, is finish behind LA. And if we get what number one in the entire conference, we get Vegas, but I know we're going to go through Vegas, LA, Nashville, all the scenarios, how we can, uh, how we can face them. But yeah, there is a chance. It's, it's a very slim chance. Cause like I said, that would mean Vegas, not getting any more points. That would mean Dallas, not getting any more points and us running the table, but it's still there as a possibility. Do we know, do we know who Dallas plays in their last game? Uh, I you can just, look that up. Well, you, you can probably just yeah. click on their, their name right there. Oh, yeah, um, just while you know that you're sharing your screen just to yes. be on the safe side. Oops. I should have uh, gone schedule. It was at the, it's at the top of the screen there. They play St. Oh, yeah. Louis. So it's a winnable game for Dallas, for sure. It is. Um, but right if here. they were to lose that game on Wednesday, yeah. the Canucks do have a pretty good chance, I think, here of going 2-0 and in the last two games just because very real possibility if Winnipeg wins their next game, which is tomorrow, yeah. um, that game doesn't matter for Winnipeg. Right. Right? Because they, they, they would have a three-point lead on Colorado who has just one game left. So... Yeah. Um, they could be resting guys. The Canucks could be resting guys. Very possible that, that that happens. But I would say we're in the yeah eighty-five to ninety percent range that the Canucks will finish first in the Pacific, second in the conference, and which yeah. would result now guaranteed the Nashville Predators will be wild card one um, because if Vegas were to catch Nashville, they would also catch LA, and LA would drop below Nashville in the wild card side because I think Vegas and LA play each other at some point here for that last game for LA. So that's the only possibilities for the Canucks. Yeah. uh, Two things that you, you, you said that are, I think are very important to point out and to reiterate actually technically because Winnipeg holds, see this uh, tiebreaker over Colorado. They only need one point in their, in their next. uh, Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. They only need one point in the next two games, and they. But you're right. If they get that point in their in their next game before we play them on the 18th, they could very well rest, guys. Excellent point. And yeah, and Parker, Parker said this a few times, you guys. But it's so important to recognize why Nashville is indeed locked in. Well, you say, well, Clay can't uh, can't they even if they finish? Uh, no, they can't because LA can't beat them because of the the virtue of the tiebreaker. So yeah, you. But they can't finish six because a Pacific team has to finish ahead of them by virtue of the way that the the standings are set up that's why nashville is locked into seven yeah so very yep. very very high chance that's who we're playing which i think is you know the famous last words but th- i think that is just best case scenario uh it's i mean it's nitpicky right but mm-hmm. um you know i, I think if i'm in a spot right now i would love like hey we'll take nashville which i think is frankly out of the eight teams available <laughs> i mean think about let, let, let's say you're let's say you're a winnipeg jets fan and yep. you say, all right, who would you want to play out of all these teams? Who would you be most willing to go up against? Their answers are probably Nashville, probably LA, and probably Vancouver mm. would be my my guesses, right? Because Dallas is scary, Winnipeg's scary, Colorado's scary, obviously. Those are true contenders. Edmonton's scary. Yeah. Um, and then Vegas has that cup pedigree. They have Mark Stone coming back. Uh, you know, they, they're going to be, you know, $30 million over the cap by game one. Um, <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's tough to go against. So I, I think it's not like, oh, I, you know, we want Nashville. It's just yeah. like, that's, that's the team that the Canucks are the most likely to beat. And that's what yeah. we should want. And then, yeah, Vegas, you know, four of these other teams, I guess three of the other teams, if you take Nashville out of that. They're now no longer in the way, right? Yeah. Winnipeg or Colorado is gone. Not in yep. your not in your path anymore. Dallas or Vegas, not in your path anymore. Edmonton or LA, one of them's not in your path anymore. So yeah. it gets, you know, you want the easiest path possible. It's a long grind. Um, so I think that's best case. Great point. The first round is so is the most exciting round because everyone's healthy, relatively speaking, right? Obviously, you get injured and more banged up as you go. So there's upsets. There, there are 16 teams involved, but you're right. As soon as you get past the first round, your field and your side shrinks well, intuitively from eight to four. And I love what you said. There's going to be four good teams going home after two weeks, which is pretty crazy. And the other thing, uh, Parker, I'd love for you to put your look in your crystal ball. So I looked it up for us. Vegas has Chicago and then Anaheim. Which LA's is, last game. Uh, as two easy wins as you could yep. get. And LA's last game is against Chicago. So they both have Chicago. As easy of a win as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> so I see Vegas, like if I had to guess, I'd say if, if Vegas wins their two and LA wins their one, Vegas jumps to six and LA drops. So then you have Edmonton Vegas as your first round. Which I I think that's my preference because yep. that's going to be good hockey. Yeah. I think Dallas walks the Kings frankly like that's that's a no contest uh, and i'm sure that's what dallas wants too if i'm dallas i'd much rather play la than vegas i i think dallas dallas is built so so well um yeah. that i i don't see them losing either of those teams frankly but mm-hmm. um yeah I, I think that's what you'd want as a canucks fan too right have edmonton take out la most likely have dallas take out vegas um or yep. vice versa uh and you know again that path gets a little bit more clear so then uh, if that was the case, then our second round, we would be Vancouver versus Princess Edmonton, if Edmonton is Vegas. And then the other division would be Dallas versus one of Winnipeg or Colorado. And then, uh, then yeah, then it looks even, wow. This is exciting, man. This is exciting. Yeah, it definitely is. And I'm just looking at this field, right? These are the eight teams that are going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. This is a heck of an eight-team lineup. Like, yes, these are, there's going to be four very competitive, very compelling it. series. Um, like, and, and we get to watch four game, three or four games a day, right. um, from this side and from the East. Um, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Okay. Friends, you guys think that was a mess? Check this out. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me, oh, uh, I'll boy. try to do this. <laughs> I will shrink this a little bit because we have to see all the teams. Yeah, too many to count. Yeah, there. All right. I I don't know all the situations here. No, I, I we do, take forever. Yeah. I have them. I have them bookmarked. Actually, I have. I had a tweet that I grabbed. Um, 
So, <laughs> I mean, you look at this, right? You have the Islanders who have locked uh, and Tampa Bay is locked. Everyone's locked except Wild Card 2. Right, right here. So there Let's are four teams. Is Philadelphia still have a they chance? Are. I guess they yep. do. Yeah. So <laughs> all these teams have one game left and they are all within two points of each other. There's four teams here that could get through. Washington and Philadelphia play each other. If huh. Washington wins that game, they're locked because they're obviously they're in the wild card too. If yep. they get a win, they'll stay in wild card too. They're the tie break. You got it. You got it. If Detroit, Detroit is playing Montreal. Yep. Which they should win. They would need to win and obviously need Washington to lose in any fashion because they would get yep. two points to 91. Washington uh, would be less than that. Yeah. Pittsburgh plays against the Islanders. They need to win, and they need both teams in front of them to each lose, Washington and Detroit. For um, Philadelphia, they obviously play Washington, so they would need to win to beat Washington, and that would put them ahead of Washington. Uh-oh, my camera died. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. They would, they would need to beat Washington, and yeah. then obviously need Detroit and Pittsburgh to each lose to their respective opponents. Yeah. So it's it's a mess over there. Um, yeah. frankly, wow, this is going to be way lower quality. Um, but it's, it's a mess, but it's, uh, it's entertaining, right? It comes down to yeah. the last game of the season, which is, which is what you want. And I think a lot of people are wondering, well, what the heck are the tiebreakers? So the tiebreaker number one is obviously point. Well, the, no, that's not right. That's because you're tied. The tiebreaker number one really is regulation wins. So this takes out anything that's done in extra time. Then the second tiebreaker is all wins, including shootout and overtime. No, it does not include shootout. Oh, thank you. Just just uh, regulation overtime. overtime. That's why it says ROW. Gotcha. 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 And then after that, it goes into like all these weird ones. Oh, yeah. One, no shootout. Then include shootout. Gotcha. So it's three um, three tiebreakers of wins. Then it goes to head-to-head. So technically, with Philly here, if, they, if Philly wins, they get to 89. They'll be tied with Washington in regulation wins. They'll be tied with Washington in ROWs. Then it'll be as long as it's in um, in a overtime and not a shootout. Wow, this is crazy. Basically, it Washington is. controls their Washington controls their destiny because they have the tiebreaker over Detroit. That's I think the key thing to, to recognize here. Yeah. Well, do you want to quickly go over very quickly, and then we can get to the people what the Eastern Conference matchups might look like then? Yeah, I mean you're gonna have Florida Toronto. Yeah, which will be fun. Um, I guess Florida could still pass Boston, uh, and that would be Boston Toronto, which would also be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now, as it sits, it's Boston or sorry, it's the Rangers against whichever of those wildcard teams gets through. Um, you then would have, uh, New York against Tampa or sorry, Boston against Tampa. Um, and then you have Florida, Toronto, Carolina Islanders. Uh, Again, all those would be pretty good series. I think, except whichever wildcard two team gets in, that's, they're probably going to get thrashed by the Rangers, but so, yeah, so it's crazy. Carolina Islanders is the only, the Battle of the Sebastian Ajos is the only um, is the only series that's set because, as you pointed out, Florida can leapfrog Boston. So the whoever comes in second of those two gets, that's who Toronto gets to play. And then, um, yeah, and then it looks like uh, then the other team who wins the division gets Tampa. So uh, still a lot of uncertainty, even more uncertainty in the East than there is in the West. Yeah, but it is fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we got 50 minutes to go. I think Perfect. we have we covered everything. Did we pull this off? Yeah, we did game review, which is only one, which helped. We did yep. quick preview of the two and who if Dempo is going to play. And then yep. then we did all Canucks possibilities for playoff position, all Canucks possible possible opponents. And then we went through the East. Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty good on our part. So now is the time to go to the people. There are uh, 170 of you here on the YouTube side, but there's over 550 of you in total across all three platforms. So um, get your questions in uh, right now. Uh, I think do the, do the Twitter ones come through? They do as long as they're not replying to one of our tweets. So Parker and I are both streaming this also on our individual Twitter accounts. So if you reply in the stream, as in, uh, yeah, comment on the stream, we will see it here in in our back end, which is great in our app. And, uh, but if you reply to the tweet, but no one does that anyway. So yeah, that would be <laughs> weird. Um, unless you did that, then you're not weird. You're normal. Let's uh, yeah, let's go to the people. Um, 
uh, Jack asks what happens to my tickets if the if the Canucks sweep. Yes, I would get a refund in that case, but I would much rather the Canucks be up three one in the series going into Game Five, and then hopefully get to go see them uh, go see them get the win. Yeah, actually. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's yeah. So, so Arjun asks, um, does the long travel between Vancouver and Nashville hurt the Canucks if it's a long series? I mean, obviously it hurts both teams equally, um, but I guess you're saying for the future rounds uh, as well. Um, how long is that flight? Like three hour, three and a half hour flight? I think, I think it's a bit more than that. I think it's four. Um, I hear between four and five. Yeah, yeah. Vancouver to Nashville <laughs> flight time. Uh, six hours connecting. They will not be connecting uh four and a half ish so yeah that is a uh that's a long flight it's a lot of travel um i think it does and i i know this is getting a bit more play because of um you know what i think what bx has said uh, about the travel uh, um uh from when they played nashville um and how it does have an impact so it probably does it doesn't help um in a perfect world and again i'm not saying this happens the Canucks win the series in four or five games. You'd yeah. only have to travel. Um, you'd stay at home for your first two games. You travel to Nashville for two games. You travel back home for the one game. So only one flight each way if you win it in five, um, which is best case scenario, right? And at that point, you have a few days of rest and it's a non-factor. Um, but if it goes to six, you know, six and seven is the same amount of flights. Um, then you're starting to, you know, then it might, those miles might have an impact. Yes, great point. So, yeah, for for this actual series, yeah, obviously both teams are are traveling the same amount because they're they're playing each other. Philly asked a great question. I don't get how Flyers would pass Capitals if they won. Don't they have the tiebreaker? No. So what happens, Philly? Is if remember Detroit's got to lose, Washington's got to lose, Pittsburgh got to lose. If Philly wins and they tie Washington, it gets to the sixth tiebreaker, which is goal differential, and the only team that has a worse goal differential of playoff teams than Philly is Washington. So they tie in wins, regulation wins, regulation and overtime wins, regulation overtime shootout wins. They split the season series <laughs> and then they get to the sixth tiebreaker, which is goal differential. Yeah, the Capitals technically have that tiebreaker 31 to 30, as you said right now, but yeah. if Philadelphia wins in regulation, then right. they are tied. And like you said, it goes all the way uh, down the line. Yeah, great point. Score prediction for tomorrow's game. I'm going to Old Faithful. 4-2 Canucks. That's what I'm doing. I know it's a little bit lazy, but I, I feel like it's going to happen on the final home game of the season. Yeah, I'll take a 3-1. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think the Canucks are going to play a pretty good shutdown game tomorrow, would be my yeah. guess. Um, Fair enough. You know, score one early and just keep it tight. Yeah, very good. Very good. I see people saying hi to Trev. Hey, Trev, I guess Kempner Canucks is in here. Nice to see you. What else we got here? Um they are the, the chats are flying in i gotta <laughs> catch up here uh japan says the nhl needs to go back to the one to eight playoff system did you like that the uh the conference format i think it's more fair yeah the conference format but i really get where the nhl is going with the uh the divisional rivalries right the idea mm. is you're gonna get the same teams playing against each other year after year you're gonna yeah. get those you know, the rivalries like the Canucks in Chicago, you know, back in 2009 through 2011. Um, Cause yeah, if you keep getting, you know, just get Winnipeg and Colorado to play each other every year, right. Things will start to get a bit spicy. Um, and these are also divisional teams. They're, they're teams you see four or five times a year, right? So there might be some animosity already. Um, and it just makes the games a bit more exciting. However, one to eight is the most fair of, of all options. Pretty good. I'll take could this get crazy. Step. I was going to say, you yeah. could get crazy and get the play in going. And then <laughs> six to 10 yeah. is really important. But exactly. That's 20 teams day. making 20 teams instead of 16. I'll take this one. Stan says, if the Canucks win against Nashville, who would they be facing in the second round? Would the Canucks have a chance? Well, of course they'd have a chance. They would play the winner, presuming, of Edmonton versus Vegas or Edmonton versus LA. And just a reminder to everyone Nashville, by being the the first wild card, but by likely playing the Pacific Division team, they technically play in the Pacific Division for the rest of the playoffs. And Vegas or LA, whoever's wild card two, technically plays in Dallas's division for the rest of the playoffs. So technically, each of the divisions will have three of their native teams and then one crossover team. So that's why you could see, you could see uh, two Pacific Division teams or two Central Division teams in the conference final, but it's very unlikely because that means the wild card team has run the table. 
It's just like the CFL, <laughs> the old <laughs> crossover. CFL, where you only have to be not one of the two worst teams and you make the playoffs. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Let's expand the NHL playoffs to 28 teams. Uh, <laughs> no, I. It's it, it is funny too because I honestly forgot how That's the awesome. second round is seated. Yeah, because I haven't had to think about it. Yeah, um, exactly. Like the Canucks haven't been in the playoffs since that was even a thing. Except was that a thing in 2015? I can't remember. There was it wasn't in 2020 was weird because yeah. uh, the divisions were all wrong. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So I think at one point it was one through eight, but it reseeded every round, which is the most yeah. fair. And yeah. then it was like one through eight, but it's a bracket. So you're, you know, the one through eight winners playing the four through five winner, no yeah. matter what. Um, it's, Correct. I, I, so it's, but yeah, they, like you said, they, they try to keep it in division. So yeah. the winner of the, um, whoever led the division, Right. Yep. Uh, in that series against the wildcard team, they play the winner of the, right. the other divisional matchup. So the, the Canucks will, no matter what, play right. a Pacific Division team in round two. Correct. The reseeding uh, was tricky for any bracket challenge because you couldn't actually set a bracket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it might have made like arrangements a little bit harder too, right? Yeah. If you know, like scheduling, like if you know, okay, hey, they're going to play one of these two teams, we can start to figure out arena stuff ahead of time. Whereas yes. if it needs to get reseeded, you have to wait for all the series to be done to even think about scheduling. And then it's more right. complicated, I imagine. I don't call it competition. I call it more brethren in the circle. Have you seen Brendan Morrison started a channel? I did. I haven't watched any of it, um, yeah. but I did see that he did. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. What else we got here? Um, it's a, one question about like, is Hughes winning the Norris with Makar only two points back? He is. I, I don't. I don't have much of a concern about that. Um, he'll win the Norris, Taco to win the Jack Adams, um, and that'll be the two awards. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. What else we got? Um, G. Ellis, uh, pretty negative on, on Patterson's side, saying P has the most to prove come playoff time. He does nothing most games. Um, lately, he hasn't you know, obviously been his best for the last couple months, really, which is shocking that he has 90 points still <laughs> and like 34 goals. Um yeah, this is going to be a really interesting storyline because if, if you go through the Canucks lines, right, if you put Miller with Besser and Suter, right, like Miller in the playoffs, I think is going to be a monster, right? Like he's just has the exact build and play style for playoffs. Uh, and then I look at the third line of Lindholm, if he ends up with Garland and Joshua again, you know, that's a monster of a playoff line, especially if we're talking about Nashville. You look at Nashville's center depth, like it's not that good. Yeah, <laughs> frankly, I agree. Right? I agree. Um, so, you know, that's, that's going to be where the Canucks have a clear edge is going to be that, that forward depth. What's going to be the really interesting part is going to be what is Eli Elias Pettersson's line to, right? Does yeah. Pettersson elevate his game to that playoff level, which he strikes me as a guy who would, but it's starting to get a little bit concerning, you know, as we go through, through the season. And then if he's with Hoaglander and Mikheyev, again, no worries about Niels Hoaglander in the playoffs. I think he's going to be, just a buzzsaw out there. Um, but Mikheyev has been <laughs> shaky. I mean, he had a prime, prime scoring chance against Edmonton and of course couldn't find a way to execute. Um, right in the glove. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, that's, I think that line is going to have a big impact on, on how the Canucks play. Cause yeah, lines one and three and, and honestly line four, if we're talking, you know, Bluger, Lafferty and Pod Colson potentially, um, that's all. That also seems like a really good fourth line, frankly. Or if it's not Puck Colson, if it's PDG or Amon or whoever you throw in there, um, you know they might cycle that game to game. But I think that's going to be a really strong line for the Canucks. It's really that Pedersen line that's going to be a big question mark. Yeah, I really like this question from Ricky because you can take, you can make arguments for a PD, uh, and 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 or you can make even arguments. That, you know, I went to Miller and and Hughes yeah. here, not not because they're bad and they need to wake up. No, it's just. Uh, assert yourself as a, a true superstar, a true elite player. That's that's kind of the way I'm thinking more than like a role player, actually. Yeah, I look at a I look at a player like Victor Hedman, and yeah. how like he, obviously fantastic defenseman for his whole career, but in the playoffs he was you know just a monster, right? Um, and, and Quinn Hughes, you know, he doesn't have the size, but he has the agility more than anybody else in the league. Um, if and we haven't seen him really in the playoffs, right? We yeah. haven't. You know, he was obviously really young back in the their last foray. So 
it's going to be really interesting to see if he is still taking over games, if he changes his play style at all, or if he's still just freewheeling and, and has that confidence. <laughs> uh, I think that I think that also really depends on the opponent, right? I think against a Nashville, Hughes is going to be you know playing his normal game, but does that change against a Winnipeg or a Dallas or yeah. in the second round against an Edmonton? Um, yeah. So it, who is the most to prove? I think it's Elias Pettersson. Um, mm. But I I also like the thought of Miller or Hughes or Lindholm. Frankly, uh, I think those are going to be very key pieces. Um, and I hope Demko comes out proving things as well. Right. Obviously, he had the bubble and he was fantastic, but yeah. um, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Great point about Hughes, the wheeling and dealing, the free wheeling. Uh, and we know, Parker, that teams are going to take runs at him for sure. The playoffs is all about uh, finishing your checks and and rubbing guys out of the boards. But guys have tried to do that to uh, Hughes all all season and he's been able to e- evade it. Right. So we'll see. That, that's gonna that's gonna be fascinating to watch for sure i i saw some questions I, I don't think i saw this exact question uh maybe i did but i, I lost it uh so sorry if you're the one that asked this mm. um just asking about like every every time you have some sort of playoff push you have an unlikely hero that sort of emerges um mm. as, a, as a fan favorite and someone who's just electric during the playoffs um yeah. who do you think that ends up being for the canucks well, I'm not sure if this is the one that sparked it. Uh, which one player do you think will be the major spark? Maybe sure. that might be. Yeah, because uh, actually that's he's been trending up. Garland has been trending up. I think Joshua yeah. has ability to uh, I think Joshua's going to win on Sung Hero tomorrow, quite frankly. But I, he's the ability to to take a big hit, um, make a big hit, but also score. So I, I think um, I think it could be one of these secondary players like we expect Besser, Miller, Hughes, Demko and PD to do well. So it's that next tier. So I, I would go Garland or Joshua. And actually, you know, I, I just said it's not about justifying the trade. I would love it to be Lindholm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think back to the 2011 run, like the big goals Rafi Torres scored. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. like that wouldn't have been my guess. Right. Um, yeah. and, and so I think, you know, like, yeah, Garland and Joshua seem like the far and away favorites to mm-hmm. be that guy. But like, what if what if Nikita Zadorov does something cool, right? Like it has That's a big true. hit and then and then go like he has these weird rushes where he looks slow, but he just walks people like maybe he pulls something like that. Like, I, I think that would be uh, a bit of a, a potential hero. I, I think that would be really cool. Love it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Parker. I think the NHL is constantly updating schedules based on arena availability. Of course, they don't know who's playing who yet. So they're basically have one ready, but they don't release it. I don't think until the teams are set, right? Yeah. The matchups will have to be set. Um, yeah. I saw someone on the Canucks subreddit earlier today who like mapped out all the concerts at both arenas at Bridgestone and at Rogers <laughs> arena. Um, and it sort of worked out to have like, it was like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So yeah. only a one day gap, but then it would be like, then Tuesday, like a two day gap. Cause there was a concert on the Monday or something along those yeah. lines. Um, so there's, there's a lot at play, right? It's not just going to be two games, two day break, two games, two day break. Um, yeah. there's, there's some things to contend with. Um, you know, given what we just talked about in your work trip, they would be in the playoffs. Yeah. (laughs) I was gonna say, given what we talked about earlier in your work trip, I'm sure you'd be thrilled if it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday. Oh, because then you, yeah. Then you're back. I'd I'd miss one. I'd miss one game, but I'd, I'd figure it out. Right. I'll find a hockey bar in San Diego. If I have to (laughs) speak of hockey bar, have you heard about any watch parties or anything yet? No, it's a touchy subject, obviously with, with 2011. Um, I just don't, I, I think, 2011 like there's all there was all the cell phone cameras that no one really thought about i think that had their ramifications but i think if anything happened now like it would all be recorded in like 4k 60 <laughs> frames per second like unbelievable quality from 30 38 different angles like i i think it's a lot harder to get away with stuff now that i think yeah. Yeah, it's probably fine especially if you you know police it well right have it like be a, a free ticketed entry or something and like yes. Um, and you know, shut a street down or, or even just do it on like Griffiths way, um, yep. or Expo Boulevard, whatever that street is that goes under, um, right. You can sort of just shut that down at the corner yeah. where the taco Fino is and, and, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what place that is by the Costco, yeah, right. I shut you. that whole thing down, get that whole plaza going, um, put a big screen out there. Um, yeah, I'm planning on doing my own unless there's something big that I can go to, but, uh, right. yeah. Right. You should stream your watch party. I'm just kidding. 
No, I'm not going to do that. Too risky. Okay, well, Too watch what I can the police. <laughs> there you go. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to combine the rare quadruple tweet into one or question. Whoa. Because they're all the same. Watch this. Parkholz in our dark horse. What about Parkholz instead of Mikheyev? Mikheyev should be on the fourth line. We need our sheep veins. I, it, so follow, following this train of thought, the thing about Pod, uh, Pod is he's not experienced. And I think uh, sometimes you you go with a more experienced player. So I think it's going to be Di Giuseppe and Pod Colson switching, honestly, switching in and out for each other on that fourth line. Uh, that's well, that's what I see. And I don't think Baines, he has even less experience than Pod Colson. So he'll be a black ace, but I don't think he's going to get playoff uh, You know. I don't think I don't think Bain sees a second of ice time unless there's a bunch of injuries. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, it's going to be PDG and Pod Coles and in and out of that fourth line. And look, the lines aren't going to be set in stone, right? Yeah. Yep. I like you know Miller and Besser will play together. You know Joshua and Garland will play together. Um, mm-hmm. Those are the big ones, and the way it slots out with everyone healthy is the way we described it earlier. But like yep. I said, yeah, it does leave Pedersen in a bit of a weird spot, right? I, I like Hoaglander there, but Mikheyev's a, a big question mark. I just, I maybe Pod Colson moves up for a shift or two for a spark, but I don't see that mm. being, you know, I'm thinking game one starting lineup. I don't think you're seeing Pod Colson in the top six. Um, I agree. I don't think he's playing more than eight minutes a night. Yeah, and that's fine. That's fine. If you, yep. he's been okay in the bottom six. He he gets a couple of hits a game. Hasn't really looked dangerous around the net yet, but uh, he'll play a role. The, there's going to be a lot of role players. We, we've talked about that for the past, uh, you know, few minutes that there's going to be a role for all players you need all types in the playoffs to go yeah yeah well we're at a at about our time <clears throat> yep so folks if you enjoyed the show and, and this is by far our most viewed because we used twitter for once um <laughs> wow if only we could have thought of this earlier uh because i think there's about 450 people watching on twitter right now which is more than on youtube by a good margin so no. yep. let's let's convert those of you on Twitter, thank you for joining. Um, feel yeah. free to uh, go to the Canucks After Dark YouTube channel, hit subscribe over there so you see every time we're live. Uh, we do this, and we will be doing this every Monday, ideally, throughout the playoffs. So make sure uh, you're following myself or Clay or both in a perfect world. If you are on the YouTube yeah. side and you missed any part of the show, you are welcome to rewind back to the beginning. You can also find it on your favorite podcast platform. We'll have that updated in about 15 minutes or so. Clay. Any parting words um, on our final show before the end of the regular season and before our big playoff series preview uh, next Monday? No, you said it well, and we've we've talked about how excited we both are for this this community, this channel, a chance for us to collab actually into the postseason for once. So uh, I think we did a pretty good job of setting the table, and then next Monday we'll likely start serving some food up as we get ready for game one so i can't wait man it's gonna be a fun ride for sure let's hope it's, it's a long ride too it's gonna get in depth next week we'll be going through every single player basically on the nashville roster every single matchup um you know power plays penalty kills the whole nine um it's gonna be very very fun make sure you stick around um and yeah other than that have a good night everybody <laughs>